This is Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here he is, the host of the podcast, A.W.R. Hawkins. Folks, welcome to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart News podcast focused on guns, gun rights, the Second Amendment. You know, we sum these things up here under the banner of freedom, and that's because an armed citizen is a free citizen. It's as simple as that. This has been a crazy week. The news cycle has afforded us a lot of pro-gun news, big news. But what that does is that lures the snakes out from under their rocks. So the Democrats have been out hissing all week. Their surrogates in the established media in uh, Hollywood have been out hissing all week. They're going nuts, mainly over the State Department settlement with Cody Wilson uh, regarding 3D printed firearms. We'll get into that in a little while, but I'm just saying it has been nuts. And in the midst of covering all that, I've had a lot of exchanges with many of you, and there's no way I can get to all of you. There were that many, and I I feel bad because I know when I mention a name, I overlook two or three. I keep my little whiteboard during the week, and when I get emails or tweets or photos from you guys, I write down the name. And I put a little note, and I remember that I, I need to mention that exchange. I know that my buddy Cal over there in West Texas He reached out to me. He's looking at that Walther PPS M2. I'm telling you, that's a great carry gun. It's very thin. It's easy to conceal. And uh, it holds eight rounds of nine millimeters. So see, I like that. I feel like you have have a compact pistol. You still have firepower. And uh, the thing is dependable and accurate. All right. R.R. Gray reached out to me. He got a Ruger rifle. He showed me pictures of it. I'd never seen the rifle before. Man, it was a beautiful gun. I want to investigate that rifle a little bit. It was gorgeous, but I appreciate that, RR. Uh, Joseph Wakeland in Houston, he sent me a pic of his Glock holstered on his hip with a quotation, always ready. Dude, that's money right there. Always ready. He looked like he's carrying it inside the waistband, lets his shirt hang down over it. That's how I carry almost every gun that I carry. Uh, I rarely open carry. I do from time to time. I just do it every now and then because I think it's good for people in the public to see a gun every now and then. Uh, But um, I usually carry inside the waistband with a T-shirt hanging over. You know, I dress like a bum, folks. You know that, don't you? I really do. And this is no this is no comment on Joseph's picture, by the way. I'm not trying to say Joseph does. I'm saying I do. I like to go to Walmart, buy a pair of pants, and I bring them home and I cut them off. Official short pants. <laughs> Seriously. I got threads and stuff hanging off the end of them. Those pants, I have a number of pairs, short pants, and a t-shirt. And a pair of Crocs or a pair of flip-flops, dude, that's all I wear. Of course, when I wake up, all I do is come into my office and sit and type. Sometimes I type for six to seven hours a day. Sometimes I type for 12 hours a day. Uh, Sometimes I type for even longer. Sometimes I have to wake up during the night, sleep maybe from 10 to 2, wake up at 2, type 2 to 4, go back to bed, try to get an hour and a half of sleep, wake up, and then work a 10-hour day point is i'm not leaving the house so i don't really care so anyway i don't know how i got sidetracked on that but just how it works uh now wadford and i want to give a shout out i promised him that i would uh i was in nashville meeting with uh orca coolers uh, about a week and a half two weeks ago and i'm walking by rippies those of you who've been down on Broadway in Nashville, you're familiar with Rippies. It's three or four uh, little locations side by side by side. And as I'm walking by, I had on my Breitbart shirt. Niall hollered at me how much he loved the site. We got to talking. I said, hey, I do all their gun riding. And boom, we took a photo together. We sat there and talked. So shout out to Niall. Keep it real. Glad you're out there. Great to meet you. Mark George, Canadian resident. And uh, he, he did some guest writing for us at Breitbart this week, explaining the amount of gun control in that country. It was really insightful. He has done what must be done to obtain a firearm license in that country. And he talked about what he had to go through to do it, the amount of money it cost, all this. It's ridiculous. Folks, I'm going to tell you this. 
whether you're talking about Canada or whether you're talking about California, when the government can force you to get a certificate from the state or the government to go through this class, to obtain this license, just to own a gun, then you really don't have any right at all anymore. You have a privilege. When the Second Amendment was ratified in 1791, notice I didn't say 1971. Notice I said 1791. A long time ago, folks. A long time ago. When it was ratified, Americans, and they needed a gun, well, they just buy a gun from their neighbor. Well, they buy a gun from a coworker or a friend or a family member. Or they might walk into a store and buy a gun. They did not ask the government, can I buy a gun? They did not ask the government, must I obtain a safety certificate first to purchase a firearm? No, they had a right to buy a gun. And the Second Amendment protected that right. These heathens under Bill Clinton in 1998 put in place background checks. You see, Bill Clinton was different than Obama in this way. Obama was at open war with the Second Amendment. He wasn't shy about it, just like Hillary after him. Bill Clinton tried to act like he was pro-Second Amendment, but all the while he was working to undercut it. And they put these background checks in place so that now when you go in a retail store, in order to buy a firearm, you must first ask the government's permission. You give them all your private information. In 1791, there was none of this stuff. The founders understood, look, this is a natural right. The government is to stay out of it. The point is, Mark George really did a great job. Look up his piece on Breitbart. He did a great job showing where all of this ends up. If you don't stop it now, in states like California and New York and New Jersey and others, if you don't stop it now, Mark George shows where it ends up. He really did. Now, folks, here's the news of the week. It's been the news of two weeks, to be honest with you. Cody Wilson, defense distributed, reached a settlement with the State Department. Now, sometimes we say reached a settlement with the DOJ, and either way, it's right, and here's why. What happened is in 2013, the State Department stopped Cody stepped in and made him take down 3D print files for guns. He had them online. He couldn't have them online anymore, so says the State Department. In 2015, Cody and the Second Amendment Foundation sued the State Department. On July 10th of this year, we reported at Breitbart that Cody and the Second Amendment Foundation won. They reached the settlement whereby the State Department will allow him to begin putting 3D print files online again. That settlement is finalized by the DOJ. So you have both the State Department and the DOJ involved here. This is a huge victory. Cody Wilson sued, this is what it amounts to, he sued the U.S. government and won. Very genius move, by the way. He didn't sue them on Second Amendment grounds. Not that he's embarrassed about the Second Amendment or doesn't love it. I know Cody personally. I should say that up front. I do. I've had him at my home. I'll have him at my home again next month. I know him personally. He loves the Second Amendment. But I'll tell you what I think he loves even more is the First Amendment. And it was on First Amendment grounds that he sued the government, saying that their restrictions on what he could and couldn't share online were tantamount to a violation of his free speech rights. And he won. And folks, did he smoke out the Democrats on this? You have Chuck Schumer, and this is news from this week. Chuck Schumer is out saying that sharing 3D print files, that that opens the door to a, quote, fully semi-automatic weapon, unquote. What? What'd you say, Chuck? Sharing 3D print files opens the door to a, quote, fully semi-automatic weapon. The left speaks in gibberish. There is no such thing as a fully semi-automatic weapon. What they do is they try to make everything sound as ominous as they can. So by calling it a fully semi-automatic weapon, they kind of hint at full auto without saying it. 
And that's, you know, just kind of trying to use that fear factor to gain a few more people to oppose 3D printed firearms. All right. You had Chuck Schumer doing that. You have celebrities just losing it. Julian Moore, who doesn't come across as that stable anyway when it comes to the gun control argument. You know, she's an advocate for Michael Bloomberg funded every town for gun safety. Well, she's out now just begging people, begging people uh, to reach out to the State Department and have the State Department pull the settlement before it's finalized. Just have them pull it. You have Chelsea Handler, who is definitely who is definitely a little out of whack. You have Chelsea Handler asking people to sign a petition to convince Attorney General Jeff Sessions to uh, not finalize, to not finalize the settlement. And you have Alyssa Milano, who's out there asking people to sign a moveon.org petition uh, to get Congress to act against 3D printed firearms. I mean, it's unreal. You have attorneys in Pennsylvania, in New Jersey, and in the city of Los Angeles already threatening suit against Cody Wilson. Literally, threatening suit. You have the attorney in, uh, in, uh, in uh, PA uh, on, a, on a Sunday got a judge, drug a judge into court to try to block uh, Cody from putting 3D files online. Got the judge to go to a court in the middle of a Sunday afternoon. Judge told him, hey, folks, I mean, hey, you haven't presented anything here that I can act on, and that was it. You know, uh, now, Cody gave a little, and, and not, I don't mean that in a critical way of Cody, but Cody said, look, dude, if it makes you feel better, we won't post any files that are visible in Pennsylvania. You know, well, he's, Cody's trying to find some kind of compromise uh, with some of these people. I don't personally believe compromise is possible with the left. But I'm not being critical of Cody. What Cody's trying to do is stop these heathens because they're completely losing it. Just stop them. I think he's trying to see if I appease a couple of these early ones, will they just take their ball and go home? But I'm telling you, folks, it is a mess. And for there'll be the next few days I'll be writing on this until it's all good and settled. I don't know how Cody's sleeping right now because... His name is uh, in suits, in courts, everywhere. But that is the news this week as far as the big news, okay? We have to understand that a lot of the people that are complaining, especially the uh, celebrities, they don't, well, I can't say that. Chuck Schumer, he's, he, he's not a mental heavyweight. These people don't understand 3D printed firearms. And, I, and, and maybe some of you don't. In an honest way. So I'm not putting you down. But the goal of this podcast is to share the news, yes, but also to educate. So let me speak to you a minute about a 3D printed firearm and about the things that Cody is doing. Cody's Defense Distributed sells a machine. It's a CNC machine called a Ghost Gunner. He also sells a machine called a Ghost Gunner 2. With these machines, you can take an 80 percent lower which is legal to buy unregulated in almost every state there are some states you must know your state laws you must study them some states like california and other states you get in trouble all right if you live in a state where the heathens control the state house then you better check the laws before you do any 3d printing or any uh, cnc work on an 80 percent lower let me put it that way and when I say heathens, I mean Democrats, but you know that. You buy a Cody's Ghost Gunner too. You could set it up in your garage, in your favorite closet, in your kitchen. Wherever you want, you set it up. You load in and 80% lower. That means that lower is 80% completed. That machine is pre-programmed to finish that lower. Like you may load in a lower for a 1911 handgun, a lower for an AR-15, a lower for an AR-10, which is a 308 on an AR-15 frame. Cody's machines have a lot of options, but you load in that lower. When you purchase the machine, you see the options you have. You load in the lower, the machine, then you run it, and it finishes that lower. Now you have a lower that has all the, all the proper holes drilled in it. It's ready for you to add parts kits to assemble a firearm. Now, you assemble a firearm around that, you're going to have to have some knowledge. And by some, I shouldn't say some. You're going to have to have quite a bit. 
or you're going to have to have a gunsmith buddy. I built a 1911, often 80% lower, using one of Cody's machines. I think it took me two weeks to complete it, three weeks. Cody's machine didn't take that long. His machine took two hours, two and a half. But it's a work in progress for someone like me who doesn't have... I have tons of firearm knowledge when it comes to types of firearms, bullets, uh, the, you know, the actions of these firearms, uh, concealed carry firearms, the best options, all this kind of stuff. But when it comes to just looking at a table full of parts and assembling a gun from scratch... I'm not the best. So I had to have a gunsmith and buddy help me. And the thing is, a lot of these parts kits, and this isn't a reflection on Cody. The kits are made elsewhere that you buy to go with the 80% lower. A lot of these kits, certain parts have to be worked on. They have to be tweaked for them to work, even though they came in the same kit as the other parts. But let's just fast forward. After two or three weeks, I had a 1911 that works just fine. Shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots and shoots, just like any other 1911. Now, here's what the left misses. To do that gun costs about uh, $25 to $2,700. Because Cody's machine costs $1,700. The parts kit costs about $500 on top of that. So we're at $2,200. And then the amount of money you would pay a gunsmith to put this gun together, including all the tweaking, which includes machine work, you, you're spending $25 to $2,700. bucks. All right. So... The left acts like because there is such a thing as 3D gun printing, that criminals are going to make 3D guns instead of just buying a gun in a dark alley. It doesn't make any sense. They could buy a gun in a dark alley that has the serial number scraped off of it for what, two, three hundred dollars. Or they can learn your pattern and when you leave your home to go to work, they can just go in your house and steal your gun for nothing. So what are they going to do? Are they going to pay nothing? Are they going to pay $300? Or are they going to pay $2,700 for a gun? See, it doesn't make any sense. It's not realistic. Even a criminal is smarter than that. Even a criminal is smarter than that. He or she is going to keep buying guns cheap on the black market. This point completely escapes the left. Of course, they're in freakout mode, but it completely escapes them. The LA Times, they got smoked out with the rest of them. The 3D print file deal has them all worked up. LA Times comes out, restates their position that DC versus Heller was wrong, that it's a fraudulent ruling. It's hard to believe that a newspaper would actually print this, but they actually say that there was no individual right to keep and bear arms prior to 2008, that Justice Scalia created an individual right to keep and bear arms via the Heller ruling. I'm not kidding. Now they say that the Ninth Amendment ruling that allows open carry, that was a great ruling, by the way, uh, that that ruling is also wrong, and uh, they're urging people to have that ruling overturned. When I opened this podcast with all of the pro-gun news of the week, the Ninth Circuit ruled that you have a constitutional right to openly carry a firearm outside your home. I paused, let it soak in. You have a constitutional right to openly carry a firearm outside your home. Folks, you want to talk about a one-two punch. Take the settlement with Cody Wilson on 3D gun printing. Take the ruling from the Ninth Circuit on openly carrying a gun outside the home, and the left doesn't know what to do. Now, the Ninth Circuit ruling arose from a case in Hawaii where George Young George Young brought suit because he had been denied a concealed carry permit more than once, and he said that denial was tantamount to violating his Second Amendment rights. The Ninth Circuit, a three-judge panel from the circuit, agreed with him. They said, look, you've got a right to carry a gun outside the home and to do so openly. Here's what has the left so worked up. If they pursue the Ninth Circuit ruling, the three-judge panel ruling, if they pursue it via appeal and seek an en banc hearing to reverse the open carry decision, if they do that, they risk pushing this all the way to the Supreme Court at a time when Justice Brett Kavanaugh will be on that court. And then... The court rules in favor of open carry outside the home. And when the Supreme Court rules on that, 
It affects far more states than a Ninth Circuit ruling. So the liberals are all worked up. They're so used to using the court system to control our actions, to undermine our freedom. And what happens? Cody Wilson uses the court system and beats them, beats the U.S. government. What happens? George Young in Hawaii uses the court system and beats Hawaii. They're not used to this, folks. Now, what are the ramifications of the Ninth Circuit decision? A quick explanation is this. The Ninth Circuit covers, you know, select Western states and Hawaii. So that's where that ruling would be, will be impactful for as long as it stands. That's where it'll be impactful. On a broader basis, as I say, if the left seeks an appeal and an in ruling by the Ninth Circuit reverses the ruling I'm talking about, if that happens, then this goes to the Supreme Court and becomes perhaps the next heller as far as the value or the force of it. So we'll see. I'm being honest when I say this. If I were the left, I would let sleeping dogs lie on this. It's a devious move, but it keeps this from from coming under the purview of someone like Justice Kavanaugh, who they fear. They fear like, uh, you can't even put in words how much they fear him. They act like they hate him. They paint him uh, as an idiot. They paint him as a hick. You know, he's another pro-life, pro-gun, this and that. But they fear him. They fear him because they know that once he's on the court, that court is 5-4 pro-gun, period. If I were them, I wouldn't push it up in front of the court, but we'll see. You know what we'll do, folks? Let's do this. I've got a guest waiting on the line. He's a buddy of mine, and I'll talk about him more after we come back from the break, but Cam Edwards from NRA TV's Cam and Company, he's on the line, and uh, he wants to talk about the Ninth Circuit ruling. So let's do that. Let's transition. Take our break, come back, and talk to Cam about what this ruling that openly carrying a gun in public is constitutional. What does this ruling mean for Americans? Folks, you're listening to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins. We'll be back right after this. Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Why did we see some of the Republican kissing of Mark Zuckerberg that was taking place? I called it kissing the ring because I felt like every single person practically had to kiss the ring of this guy, you know, who wants to do nothing except get all those people out of office. So, you know, bizarre, bizarre behavior from the Republicans. Breitbart News Daily, weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. This is Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here, once again, is A.W.R. Hawkins. Hey folks, welcome back to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins. Look, so happy to have as a guest this segment, Cam Edwards, uh, host of NRA TV's Cam and Company. Uh, look, he's a longtime gun rights activist, and I'm be honest with you, he's a friend. Uh, I have the honor every now and then of being on Cam and Company as a guest, and uh, thank you, Cam, for making time to be with us here today. Hey, A.W.R., it's good talking to you, man. Uh, thank you, buddy. Listen, that ruling coming out of the Ninth Circuit, it's really got me. It was such a massive ruling. Uh, you know, they ruled that it is constitutional to openly carry a firearm outside the home. And uh, that came from uh, George Young filing a complaint in Hawaii because he had been denied uh, one twice maybe more but i think twice he had been denied a carry permit and his argument was that they had him in a lockbox so to speak where he could not exercise his second amendment rights and he couldn't carry a gun outside his home for self-defense and so the ninth circuit said look you can carry that gun outside your home for self-defense and they were very explicit about open carry what does this mean for the average american who is concerned about defending his or her family how will this play out going forward yeah, I think what it means is that we're one step closer towards the Supreme Court being offered up a case that deals with that very basic issue. Uh, does the right to bear arms actually mean what it says in the Constitution? You know, it's interesting, Dr. Hawk, is this uh, a case out of Hawaii, the Young case? You could almost look at this as sort of 
uh, a, a three-act play in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals when it comes to the right to bear arms. And that first act took place back in 2014, the Peruta decision. That was a case in California uh, dealing with concealed carry. And California had a complete ban on open carry. Uh, Ed Peruta and a number of other plaintiffs in San Diego County could not get a concealed carry license because the sheriff didn't recognize self-defense as a reason to issue a concealed carry license. So the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, a, a three-judge panel, in fact, uh, Judge Dermot O'Scanlan uh, wrote the majority opinion in the Peruta case, uh, and he also wrote the majority opinion in the Young case that was handed down this last week. Uh, he said, well, look, the Second Amendment says that you've got the right to bear arms, and if California prohibits the open carrying of firearms, then, it, then the Second Amendment must protect the concealed carrying of firearms. So that was back in 2014. 2016, two years ago, uh, Judge O'Scanlan's colleagues on the Ninth Circuit in an en banc decision overturned him. And they say, no, there is no right to carry a concealed firearm under the Second Amendment. And now we get uh, uh, Judge uh, O'Scanlan's revenge, so to speak. It, it was his opportunity to address and answer his colleagues uh, with the Young case. And in the Young case, the situation was reversed from Peruta. In California, open carry was banned, but... Uh, uh, concealed carry was theoretically allowed in, in Hawaii. Uh, open carry and concealed carry are both sort of theoretically allowed, but uh, no concealed carry licenses are issued. Uh, Mr. Young filed suit knowing that the Ninth Circuit had already said, all right, there is no right to carry concealed. And now Judge O'Scanlan says, well, look, if my colleagues say there's no right to carry a concealed firearm, and again, I'm looking here at the Second Amendment, we've got the right to keep, we've got the right to bear, that must mean that we've got the right to open carry. Uh, I, I think you're right. There are a lot of people, uh, politicians, anti-gun activists around the country who are so freaked out by this because they've never considered the possibility really of a constitutional right to open carry. But what Judge O'Scanlan really said is, look, you've got the right to carry. And if the state would ban one form of carry, it has to allow the other. Uh, right. You could allow both, but you can't ban both. The right to bear arms is a real Right. And that's ultimately what this decision last week of the young case comes down to. I agree with, you know, I've said to some people via Twitter and, and in other places that we have the right to bear the arms we keep. That's how this works. That's basically what that ruling says. To your point, we have the right to bear the arms we keep. We bear them one way or another, and the state can't take both ways away from us. Now, let me ask you, as we move forward, Cam, you just talked about Peruta. And, you know, Peruta went from a three-judge panel to an en banc hearing, overturned, so on and so forth. How do you see this one? Is this something that the left is going to keep pushing? Will there be an en banc hearing here, do you believe? I mean, will Hawaii, will they appeal this? Or are they going to let it lie for fear of landing a case in front of a Supreme Court that might have a Justice Kavanaugh on it? You know, it's interesting. The uh, the political impulse in Hawaii has certainly been uh, to call for an appeal. Uh, the governor has done so. A number of politicians there in the state legislature have done so. Uh, interestingly enough, I've not seen any comments from the gun control advocates. And, and, and you're right, Dr. Hawkins. We've seen in the past when appeals courts have ruled against uh, gun control groups or against the cities that have, you know, are, are, are siding with these gun control groups. These gun control groups lobby these cities and say, don't take this to the Supreme Court. We don't want this to set a nationwide precedent. That happened in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals with Illinois' ban on the carrying of firearms. It happened in Washington, D.C. not long ago with the quote-unquote good cause requirement. Uh, you had to show good cause before you could get your concealed carry license. So I suspect that behind the scenes there are gun control groups that are uh, advocating uh, to uh, to hold off on an appeal. This case uh, was sent back down to the trial court. Uh, and so the gun control groups could hold off on this. They could let this case go back to trial uh, and then follow the appeals process uh, back up the line here. I think right now what we're looking at from the gun control groups is simply a, a delay tactic, a stall tactic. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Does Brett Kavanaugh get confirmed to the Supreme Court? If so... Uh, you know, look, the, the gun control groups are going to see that as, as doomsday. Right. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they really are. Uh, but they're going to try to keep this, I think, uh, alive in the lower courts while the confirmation battle plays out. Right. Let me, let me ask you one other thing, Cam. At Breitbart this week, I covered a piece, L.A. Times, 
And, you know, I don't put a lot of stock in the L.A. Times. I'm not going to sit here and bash them. I'm just saying I don't. I don't really. I haven't really seen them report on guns in an honest and true fashion in many, 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 many years. But anyway, they've got an editorial up this week reacting to the Ninth Circuit decision that you and I have been discussing. And what they say is that the judgment in favor of pro-open carry, that judgment, that it is as wrong or as fraudulent, as the Heller decision. Now, you know, I talk to my readers and my listeners a lot, Cam, uh, since the Heller decision. The New York Times, the LA Times, and other newspapers, they continually tried to keep Heller in the front of people's minds so that if a liberal could win in 2016, they could revisit it and perhaps rework it. And and Hillary promised to do as much. Hillary said that she was going to tweak Heller if she were to win office. Thank goodness she didn't. But here we are now. They lost big in Heller. They lost in Chicago. They lost in this three-judge panel we're talking about. And instead of just dealing with these things, the L.A. Times says, look, Heller was wrong. This pro-open carry decision is wrong. And they're basically trying to urge people to seek an appeal, to overturn it. Tell me what's up with the media. I mean, the establishment media. Can they simply not accept what's happening? Or do they really believe that Heller was wrong? They said, Cam, they said that there was no individual right to keep and bear arms until 2008. This is what the L.A. Times said. How do you deal with this kind of stuff? You know, you, uh, boy, it, it takes a lot of deep breaths and, uh, you know, maybe a bourbon at the end of the, uh, the, end of the day. Uh, and and I, I'll take them at face value. If they say that they don't believe that the Second Amendment protects an individual right to keep their arms, okay, they don't believe that it does. Uh, the Supreme Court says that it does. The plain text of the Constitution says that it does. The history uh, behind the Second Amendment says that it does. So the L.A. Times, <laughs> as the media is so often these days, they're, they're just wrong on this issue. Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, if it protects the right to keep arms, and we know that it does, uh, the Supreme Court said so in Heller, well, you know, what the Ninth Circuit said is that the right to bear arms is just as real a right. And, and I imagine that, that this is uh, uh, troubling for a lot of anti-gun folks and a lot of folks in the media. They, they don't believe that we've got the right to keep and bear arms. Well, we do. And there are, you know, over 15 million Americans right now who are concealed carry holders. There are more than 90 million Americans who are gun owners right now, the L.A. Times, if they can't deal with a couple of those very basic facts, I mean, look, they're putting their heads in the sand, Dr. Hawkins. And and I think, and I hope, sooner rather than later, but I do believe that one day the Supreme Court uh, is going to make it crystal clear that, yes, just as the Second Amendment protects the right to keep arms, it protects the right to bear arms as well. I'm just going to ask you a little question that you raised in what you just said. Gun ownership is so wide now, Cam, especially you look at concealed carry, the millions upon millions of concealed carry permits that were issued while Obama was in office just just during that time period. But if you look at gun ownership, the the records that were set with gun sales, how is it that the establishment media appears to not come to grips with the fact that that Americans love guns. They, they keep trying to act like it's this little swath. The same old retired white guys are buying every gun, even though, uh, even though women are one of the strongest growth demographics for gun purchases and concealed carry. They keep acting like it's the same little swath of old white men just keep buying up all the guns they can, and that's what keeps the gun numbers elevated. Do they not see the truth? Or are they just trying to convince us, you know, to kind of suppress our actions, our love for guns? Are they trying to suppress our love for guns or do they honestly not see it? I mean, do you have a feel for this? I think both. I do believe that, you know, look, if you work in the media in the L.A. Times or if you work in the New York media or Washington, D.C., the chances are good you don't know anybody who's a gun owner. Right. You, you right. may interact right. with every one of your coworkers and never run across a gun owner, much less a concealed carry holder. In fact, it's really likely uh, if you live in those places that that's the case. So I think they're living in a bit of a bubble. Uh, but I also think that because their friends and their colleagues are by and large not gun owners, they hold gun owners in contempt. Right. They, they believe that gun owners are uh, just a bunch of, uh, you know, slack-jawed, drooling yokels just itching to take their gun out. They think the worst of us because they don't know us. And the the real shame, Dr. Hawkins, is that they don't make an effort to get to know us. 
Right. They don't want to know who gun owners really are. They are happier with their stereotypes of who gun owners are. Look, it's to the detriment of the media. It's to the detriment of the way that they cover this uh, issue every day. Uh, but thanks to folks like you uh, and, and what you do at Breitbart, what we do at NRA TV, we're hopefully circumventing the media and we're telling folks, we're letting folks know uh, who gun owners across the country really are. Right on. You know, I wish they would stereotype us as bacon eaters. <laughs> do, will they do that? If they'll stereotype us as bacon eaters who want to put America first, I want to be stereotyped. You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> Cam, thank you so much uh, for making time to be with us. And I hope you have a great week with your NRA TV show this week. And I look forward to the next time we're together, whether it's here or whether it's on your show. Hey, brother, I appreciate it. Thanks very much for the invite. You have a great week as well. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Folks, you're listening to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. We'll be back right after this. Breitbart News Tonight with Joel Pollack and Rebecca Mansour. The real thing that the left is angry about is they're like, how could you allow these Russian memes? Somebody saw a meme and then they decided they had to vote for Trump. Or it must have been fake news. And by fake news, they mean conservative websites. Come on. But this is what the left thinks. Fake news. And by fake news, what they mean is Shut down Breitbart. Breitbart News Tonight. Weeknights starting at 9 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot 125. This is Bullets with AWR Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is AWR Hawkins. Welcome back to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins. It was so great to have Cam Edwards on. What a great guy. He has such a well-rounded knowledge and uh, love to have him on talking. I think you can tell just by listening to him what a great guy he is. So it was great to have him. You know, when I'm talking about great guys, it makes me think when I was doing my shout outs to start the podcast, I forgot to mention Jeff Mowbray. Jeff and I have been having exchanges on Twitter for I don't know how long, but we had a bunch of exchanges this week on Instagram, and uh, Mowbray's just a good guy. So, Mowbray, shout out to you, pal, and thanks for all the exchanges that we enjoy uh, having throughout the week. In South Fulton County, Georgia, a mother was at home when her ex-boyfriend came a-knocking. And by a-knocking, I mean police say he tried to kick in her door. He eventually did kick in the door, and police say then he kept closing in on her inside the home, although she was warning him, look, I got a gun, I'm going to shoot you. Now, I don't know if he thought, well, she doesn't really have the nerve to shoot, or if he thought, well, she doesn't really have a gun. I don't know what he thought, but she shot him in the chest. Now, he lived, and he will face charges, but the bigger news is this. The mother is safe, her life intact, her dignity intact. Her children's lives intact, their dignity intact. Not because the mother has superpowers, no, but because she had a firearm. And folks, this story is brought to you by the Second Amendment. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast this week. Get your your friends, your family members, your co-workers, your neighbors to subscribe to the podcast. Just go to iTunes, subscribe to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. It's free. It'll download to your phone every Tuesday. And after you listen a little while, go back to the front page there on iTunes, the front page of the podcast, and give us a review. We'll take all the five-star reviews we can get. We need to rack up as many as we can. Get that done if you can, uh, if you can encourage your friends, your family members, your coworkers to subscribe and to give us those reviews. Folks, until we're together again next time, always remember, more guns equal more freedom. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Everything in hip-hop is not bad. Kanye agreed with us, so let's love him today until he raps tomorrow and you turn your back. Because if you jump off when the fun of the moment is over, then you are in fact making Kanye the token he is accused of being. So please, don't do that. Don't go there. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot 125.